Uh, but for more now on how we got into this cliffhanger, the chances of a deal, and what happens if nothing happens, we're joined by Michael Crowley, a senior correspondent for Time Magazine covering Washington, and by Michael Santoli, the newly appointed senior columnist of Yahoo Finance. It's great to have both of you with us. Thank Good, you. Morning. Good morning. So, Michael C., where does this stand right now? Well, right now they are uh, negotiating and uh, things are being worked out behind closed doors by the top leaders in the House and Senate and the White House, but particularly on the Senate side right now. And the question is, can the Senate leaders get together and come up with a plan that can pass through the Senate uh, that will at least give us a Band-Aid uh, to prevent all these fiscal cliff measures from kicking in? But then after that, can it pass the House of Representatives mm -hmm. and will Speaker John Boehner uh, be able to find a way to get it through that might require actually mostly Democratic votes, which will leave Republicans very unhappy with him. So you have a couple of uh, needles to thread here. It's it's still, in my view, a long shot because you got to get the Senate plan figured out first, but then can you get it through the House? And even then, it's probably just a Band-Aid solution. It's now in the Senate's hands. How much more likely is the Senate to be able to strike a deal here? I think the Senate is a little more likely. Uh, in, in recent history, the Senate has been a place where there's been more compromise. Uh, they're a little bit less divided for a variety of reasons that are Structural. Uh, so again, the question people need to ask themselves, if they hear some good news come out of the Senate, we have a deal, we've reached an understanding, can it get through the House? And uh, in particular, is John Boehner going to be willing to let it go through the House with overwhelming Democratic votes, which could put John Boehner's speakership in peril? So to some degree, will Boehner fall on his sword to prevent us from going over the cliff? It strikes me that we have a deal now is very different than if they had said we have a deal three weeks ago, for example. It looks like it's going to be something much more pared down at this point in order to get passed. Yeah, you know, the good news is there's some hope now that we're not going to go over the cliff. The bad news is typical Washington, if we don't, again, Band-Aid solution, uh, the plan they're talking about right now, the proposal would postpone a lot of the spending cuts. And what it means is we'll do it all over again as the debt limit approaches, uh, maybe sometime in February, a few weeks down the road. We're basically going to do this all over again. I think they're just trying to prevent the kind of freak out we'll see in the markets mm -hmm. and a lot of confused American taxpayers uh, on January 2nd. Uh, so uh, it's a punt, very typical Washington. Speaking of the markets, Michael Santoli, you know, you've seen them become uh, so reactionary to any statement out of Washington yeah. on this. And I wonder from your view, is it worse to go over the cliff for the markets or to have a pared down deal that the markets don't like? The markets immediately want some kind of a deal that probably spares the, the majority uh, of middle class Americans an immediate tax cut that sort of cr uh, prevents this kind of chaotic, automatic uh, spending cuts by the government and things like that. Uh, but I think in general, the market's lost its patience with the process. So I think that a failure to come to a deal would just be a reminder of how what has seemed on paper to be kind of the obvious meeting in the middle process, even that is not likely. So I think, you know, a small deal is better than no deal. But, you know, as Mike said, we're, we're heading for another fight, just like last summer, uh, summer of 2011, when the debt ceiling was kind of held hostage to this process. Which industries are really affected? Who's going to be hit by this? Well, if the spending cuts kind of hit, you know, all at once, it's probably defense that's the, that's the number one industry that gets hit. But there's all kinds of other sort of unintended or unexplored areas that seem like people are paying attention to belatedly, such as what happens to food prices. It's not really part of the fiscal cliff package, but there's a farm subsidy bill that this expires and you have to kind of find your way around that. So uh, I really think it's defense. It's really it's more about, I think, uh, the automatic tax increases on everybody that really would kick in withholding levels go up, paychecks get smaller, and that creates some kind of a maybe a spiral of hesitancy or, or a little bit of a, uh, a new conservatism in spending and business investment. There's is, also the debt ceiling portion of all of this yeah. that, you know, we've talked about this before. We hit the debt ceiling. December 31st. Treasury Secretary Geithner says he can move some money around and make it work for a while. But again, we face that battle down the road. Yeah, that's going to be the big one. And, you know, the question is, obviously, at some point, under some terms, that limit will be increased. The question is, how long will that increase last for? Are we just going to be kind of back on the treadmill of several months of stalemate before you have to re refight this battle again? And I think that's what, you know, I think everyone's kind of become weary of right now. Well, the irony is, a small package is okay because the economy's been getting better. The deficit has gotten smaller three years in a row with Washington doing nothing just because the economy has improved. So if we get kind of a small deal that gets this stuff off the front pages, the economy itself can do a little bit of the work of, of reducing the deficit on its own. How much
much does this really affect the average Joe? We know down the road it certainly could, but how much does it impact consumer confidence or how much is this just big, big businesses that are that are worried about payroll? The noisy debate affects things is a lot. You saw consumer confidence numbers go down pretty dramatically because people are paying attention to all this. And I think it gets bound up with general economic anxiety and the idea that government has too much debt and the government can't get anything done. So all those things together does affect things. I don't think that's decisive for how the economy performs really, but it's definitely something that's going to weigh on people. And, and look, if taxes go up across the board on virtually everything, then smaller take-home pay does actually impact. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Michael Crowley, Michael Santoli, thanks so much thanks. to both of you. We look forward to seeing both of you later in the new year.